In this video, you'll learn about the triangle congruence shortcuts. So, if you're a person who likes to take shortcuts in life, this one's for you. In the two pictures below, we have two sets or two pairs of triangles that are congruent to each other. <clears throat> and by definition, two triangles are congruent to each other if and only if all three sides of one triangle are congruent to all three sides of another triangle, and all three angles of one triangle are congruent to all three angles of another triangle. And both these pairs of pictures both clearly show that with the markings on them. Now, that's, if you're paying attention, that's six things that I would have to point out in one triangle that is congruent to six things in another triangle. So the whole idea of these shortcuts is to try to maybe only show that three sides of one triangle is congruent to three sides of another triangle, and hopefully that will be enough information to show that the two triangles are congruent. So that's what we'll be doing here. So... First, let's look at the SSS, which stands for the side-side-side triangle congruence conjecture. And that says that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Now, we'll investigate this in class, but just to give you an idea of how this would work, let's look at this geometry sketchpad investigation. So, shown here are two triangles, each with the same side length, and they happen to be congruent. So no matter how I adjust these side lengths, so now I'm going to make AC a little smaller, AB a little smaller, and maybe CB a little bigger. If I first adjust triangle ABC so that these two triangles are congruent, I'm going to make one type of triangle. So it's going to take some trial and error to get, but here's one triangle. And now notice that the blue segments have to be congruent, the purple segments have to be congruent, and so do the green segments. So now if I try to make a triangle out of these three segments by adjusting these side lengths. Oh wait, I want to try to make it. Just bear with me for one second. Here we go. You'll see that there's only one possible triangle to make. And it's going to come out to be congruent to triangle ABC that we first made. Now, if you look at the two triangles and compare them and even overlap them, right, they don't look exact, but those two triangles are congruent. All three sides of one triangle are congruent to all three sides of another triangle, and all three of those angles are, are congruent. So, we can assume that if we see three sides in one triangle that are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then everything about that first triangle is congruent to everything about the second triangle. So that, goes to, that has to do with sides and angles. So, let's say I wanted to prove or decide if these two triangles, ADC and ACD, see if they're congruent. Well, side DA equals side BA, so that's one set of side, sides. Side DC equals side CB, so that's another set of sides. And they both share side AC. So since the three sides of triangle ADC are congruent to the three sides of triangle ABC, we know that triangle ADC is congruent <clears throat> to triangle ABC. And when you name two congruent triangles, you want to make sure that all corresponding sides and angles are congruent. So for example, notice how I wrote AD first and then AB second. And notice how AD and AB both have one tick mark. And also, notice how I said DC and BC last. And notice how DC and CB are both congruent to each other. And then I said A first and C last, and in both of them, and AC is congruent to each other. So, that's the first congruence conjecture that you can assume. Side, side, side. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then everything about those triangles are congruent. So now we also know that, all, that these angles are congruent, these angles are congruent, and these two angles are congruent. Because by definition, the two triangles are congruent, therefore all the sides and angles are congruent. Now, in our next slide, we have the side-angle-side congruence conjecture. And that's also true. So if two sides and the included angle, meaning the angle in between those two sides I just mentioned, of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So again, we'll investigate this in class, and just trust me on this one. I don't want to make you sit through another geometry sketchpad demonstration, but just know that it's true. So now I'm going to try to show that 
um, triangle BGH is congruent to triangle GAI by using the side angle side conjecture. So first I know that these two sides are congruent because they both have a measure of four units. And I also know that since GH is a mid-segment of triangle ABC, that GH is going to be half of the base AC. So since AC has a length of 12, GH is going to have a length of 6. So now I know that these two sides, GH and AI, are also congruent. Now if I could just show that the included angle, this angle right here and this angle right here are congruent, then I can prove that triangles BGH and GAI are congruent by the side angle side conjecture. And they are because since I know GH is a mid-segment, I know that A, it's half of the base, AC, and also GH is parallel to the base, GC. So, since that's true, I have two parallel lines right here and a transversal, and like I marked off earlier, these two angles will be corresponding, so therefore they're congruent. So now I know that triangle BCH is congruent to triangle GAI. The next triangle congruence conjecture we'll look at is angle side angle. So, if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. And again, included just means that it has to be the side in between the two angles that we know are congruent. Another triangle congruence conjecture is angle angle side. So if two angles and the non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the non-included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So now, just like how the side, see how the S is outside of the two A's? Um, that means that the side that's congruent has to be outside of the two angles that are congruent. And if we look back at angle side angle, just like the S is right in between the two A's. That means that the side is right in between the two angles that are congruent. So that's the, dif that's the difference between angle side angle and angle angle side. It's either the side is in between the two congruent angles or it's not in between the two congruent angles. That's getting really annoying. Alright, so let's prove that triangles TAC and SOC are congruent to each other by angle side angle and also angle angle side. So first let's look at angle angle side. So I'll do that in blue. So first I know that try this angle and this angle TCA and C, uh, SCO are congruent because they're vertical angles. And I also know that since these two lines are parallel and this is a transversal that these two angles right here are alternate interior angles. So I'll mark off that they're both congruent as well. So now I have angle angle side of one triangle is congruent to an angle angle side of another triangle. So now I know that angle or triangle TAC is congruent to triangle SOC. Now let's do the same proof but let's use angle side angle. So, I'll do this one in a different color. So, first we know that these two sides are both congruent because that's given to us. And we also know that this line TA and this line OS are parallel. So if we look at this transversal right here, we have that these two alternate interior angles are congruent. And we also have this transversal right here, which means that these two alternate interior angles are congruent. So therefore, by angle side angle, we know that triangle TAC is congruent to triangle SOC but now it's going to be by angle side angle so now let's recap what we've learned so far before we learn anything else here's a way to remember all the congruent shortcuts that we've learned so far so we have three S's, side, 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 and then if we use two S's and an A, we can either have side, angle, side, or if we put the A first, we have a bad word. Now, if it's a bad word, frontwards or backwards, it's a bad conjecture, 
So ASS or SSA, which are the same thing, are not congruence conjectures, and we'll see why in a second. Then, if we use two A's and one S, we have either angle, angle, side, which is the same thing as side, angle, angle. Those both work, and angle, side, angle. And the last thing would be angle, 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 and that is not a conjecture, and we'll see why that isn't in a second. So, here are the four conjectures that you've learned so far. One, side, side, side. Two, side, angle, side. Three, oops, that's not one. Three, angle, angle, side. And four, angle, side, angle. Now, let's look at one more that does work, and that's hypotenuse leg. And it's a special one just for right triangles. And in a right triangle, if the hypotenuse and the leg of one triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So, if we look at these two triangles, IPO and IDO, we can see that they're congruent because both their hypotenuses are congruent, and they both share this leg, IO. So, we can say that triangle IPO is congruent to triangle IDO by hypotenuse leg. Now, let's look at the two shortcuts that don't work. Here is... <clears throat> Here we have a demonstration of two sides that are congruent, so we can adjust AB and AC to be as big or small as we want them to be. And this angle, we can open and close however we want. So, if we make, and this is just one example of it, but if we make oops, these two triangles so that they have two sets of side and one set of angle that are congruent to each other, we can see that we can make two triangles that are not congruent. If you look, one of them is an acute triangle. Angle A seems to be acute, and, or, and so does angle B and angle C in the first triangle. But in the second triangle, only A and C look acute, but B looks obtuse. So therefore, that's why, why, that's why side side angle is not a congruent shortcut. And a way to remember that is just side side angle, or SSA, and, or angle side side. ASS spell bad words, either forwards or backwards. So if, if it's a bad word, it's a bad conjecture. And the other one that doesn't work, so first we have SSA slash ASS, bad word. Another one that doesn't work is angle, angle, angle. And the easiest counterexample to that is let's say we have one equal angular triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees. If angle, angle, angle was a congruence conjecture, that means that any other triangle that I made that was equal angular would have to look exactly like the first triangle I made. But I can make another, another triangle just scaled up that has three 60 degree angles and the sides of one triangle will not equal the sides of another triangle. So those are the two shortcuts that do not work. Alright, that's the end of the video. I hope it was informative and have a good one.